using cooperative learning, assessing individuals and groups. In this series of videos, I'm exploring different aspects of cooperative learning. Previously, I've explored the model, team building, introduced you to a number of structures, and in the most recent set of tutorials, I've explained the five accepted elements of cooperative learning in physical education. In this next set of videos, I'm exploring some ideas I've developed over the years that have helped me introduce cooperative learning to new groups of students. I've already explored lesson zero in team management. Today, I'm going to dip my toe into assessment while acknowledging that this is a big area for such short videos. Please remember, however, that while these videos are scripted, they are captured in one take with no editing, so may be a little rough and ready. Assessment. One question I often get asked at conferences is how do I assess individuals if their main contribution is to share and support their group? My response is, what do you value? Are you assessing what you value? How are you assessing? Which domain or domains are you assessing in? There are other questions I could ask, but it is a short video. Still, once you have some answers to these questions, you can start to consider how you might assess your students. Do this from lesson zero or earlier. In the same way as you plan your unit of work, plan your assessment. Tune the students into radio IIFM, i.e. what is in it for me, and let them know how their assessment will be done. In sport education, fair points are awarded. Why not award cooperation points or interdependent points? When I run a sport education season, I have MFPs, most fair players. In cooperative learning, I have most M MCPs, you guessed it, most cooperative players. Both of these awards are made by peers. Isn't that a form of assessment you could use? You might assess achievement through grades or positive comments and perhaps allow students to, attri to attribute a percentage of their mark or some of their comments to those who've helped them. Significantly, at least for me, is what I assess. I look for value added, for mastery over ego. I'm not looking for ability but achievement, which could be an increase in ability. I'm not looking for class position but improvement and not just in the physical domain. How do young people discuss problems and how do they work in the thinking time inherent in cooperative learning, i.e. the cognitive? How do they interact with others, support them, encourage them, i.e. the social? How do they express their engagement through their actions and demeanour, i.e. the effective? These are crude measures, but if I'm looking at development and if I'm open with the students about what's in it for them, then it works. In summary, Assessing in cooperative learning shouldn't, shouldn't be more of the same. It should be bespoke to the model and your objectives. To me, it's not just about the physical outcomes against the rest of the class, but about learning across many domains to become more cooperative, to recognise times when they can't be cooperative as they would like to be, and the means students employ to resolve this. This inter-peer in interactivity is as worthy of assess assessment as throwing a ball. But these are my goals. What are yours? That's it for now. I hope it's been worth your time. For more content, please visit my blog at www.peprn.com. Thanks, and stay safe.